I got a squeaky shoe. I'm running an exam tomorrow. How am I supposed to sneak up behind students if I've got a squeaky shoe? Uh, wrist drop. We're going to talk about the anatomy of wrist drop. What is wrist drop? We mean that the wrist is in, it's dropped into this sort of position. It is difficult or impossible to do this to extend the wrist and extend the fingers, it is a radial nerve palsy. So we'll have a look at where the radial nerve runs, we'll think about how it might get injured or damaged, and we'll talk about, well, the anatomy of wrist drop. I think I've been thinking of this because I've been dissecting the radial nerve recently, and I've dissected from the brachial plexus all the way to the hand. I've done the other bits and bobs as well, but it turned out quite nicely in the hand and all these branches of the radial nerve that we can see here, I found in my prosection. Well, you always find it because it's there. It's just, I don't know, it's just kind of neat. Um, the radial nerve then, so here's the shoulder, here's the elbow, here's the wrist and the hand. The radial nerve uh, from the brachial plexus will dive posteriorly through this gap here and the radial nerve is going to run to the triceps muscle, to the posterior arm and then we'll usually see it kind of um, sneaking around here. I have to take um, deltoid off. Um, and there it is back there. So this long bone here is the humerus, uh, this bone here and the radial nerve, being the nerve of the posterior compartment of the arm, it runs very, very closely to the bone, such that what you do is, is you stick your finger in there, uh, like you, you get your finger to follow the radial nerve between the muscles and the bone, and the radial nerve, it does it, it wraps around the shaft of the humerus, the diaphysis of the humerus in this radial spiral groove here and then it sneaks around to the lateral elbow kind of it's a little bit anterior sneaks across here and then gives off a couple of branches its main job is to be going to the the muscles of the posterior forearm these guys so it innovates these muscles and these muscles and it innovates the skin here and the skin here and also the skin in the back of the hand but there are no muscles in the hand that the radial nerve innovates now, this means that a fracture of the humerus, if it occurs midway along the humerus, because the radial nerve is so tightly associated with the humerus, the radial nerve is at risk of injury and is in fact likely to have been injured. So a radial nerve palsy like wrist drop is a common effect of damage to the radial nerve by fracture of the humerus. So, if the nerve has been stretched, or hopefully not, but severed or cut by sharp bits of bone, then the muscles that it innervates after that point, so it's already innervated some of the triceps muscle, but if you've fractured your humerus, you're not really gonna be one of contracting your, your triceps muscle. But the muscles here that extend the wrist and extend the fingers will now be unable to do that. They will either be weak or paralyzed because the nerve that innervates them, the radial nerve up here, has been injured. And that's wrist drop. So the wrist is in this position because we have flexors here, flexors of the wrist and flexors of the fingers, extensors here, and muscles have tone, they pull against each other. So if these muscles are now paralyzed, these muscles will win, uh, as it were, and they will pull the, the wrist into a, into a flexed position. So that is your classic sign. The next thing you'll do then is you'll test sensation of the skin here. The radial nerve is innervating the skin here. Is there a change in sensation? Is there numbness here? Look, we can see that here. This is what I was talking about. So this is the superficial branch of the radial nerve here. Here's the thumb, here's the index finger. And the super, so the, the radial nerve, as it sneaks around here, it divides and gives off a superficial branch which kind of hides under brachioradialis and runs up here. And its purpose is to run 
to the back of the hand here, see how it's running to these digits, and carry sensory innovation from the skin back here. So you will test the quality of the sensory innovation of the skin in this region. The, uh, if that's the superficial branch, then the deep branch, becoming the posterior interosseous nerve, that runs deep to these muscles, these posterior compartments of the forearm muscles, these muscles that are responsible, as I said, for wrist extension, finger extension, the muscles that are now paralyzed because the nerve has been injured up here. What else do you need to know? Well, we've also got the thumb here. The thumb is a complicated thing, but these muscles of the thumb, these tendons that we see here, are also part of the posterior compartment of the forearm, so they're also innervated by the radial nerve. So these movements of the thumb, retropulsion, um, extension, uh, those movements may also be affected by a radial nerve palsy. And then beyond that, you need to think, well, how could this nerve have become damaged? Uh, we talked about a fractured humerus, but compression of a nerve can also cause a nerve palsy. And I said that the nerve, it, it runs in there. So if you, if you have your arm over a chair, if you are sleeping very heavily, maybe you've had far too many beers uh, and you're very intoxicated and you're lying in, in an awkward position, you might be crushing that nerve, compressing that nerve at some point. It's close to the bone. So if you're compressing the nerve against the bone, that would lead to a palsy. But also, if you wanna get um, really fun, you need to remember that the radial nerve is coming from the brachial plexus. Uh, the posterior cord is running through as the radial nerve. Uh, the posterior cord is formed by many parts, but the, the middle trunk is from the C7 spinal nerve root. Is, is this an injury close to the spinal cord or in the spinal cord? A uh, useful fact here is that the C7 spinal nerve contributes to the innervation of all of these, these muscles of the posterior compartment of the forearm. Um, and to triceps, but does not contribute to brachioradialis, for example. So if brachioradialis function is intact and it's strong, then maybe C5 and C6 are okay, but C7 has been injured. But that's applying uh, deeper knowledge, right? Deeper understanding. We've talked about the brachial plexus elsewhere. And likewise, if you're interested in the dermatome patterns of the upper limb and how those might be affected, go and have a look at that dermatome video of the upper limb. And that'll add to this as well. But that is the anatomy of wrist drop. Wrist drop refers to the wrist and fingers being in a flexed position and it being difficult or impossible to extend the wrist extend the fingers and you can examine this by testing those movements against resistance and comparing to the other side um, and the radial nerve also innervates the skin here so you can also test the quality of sensation here and compare to the other side and it's a radial nerve palsy the most likely site of injury is where the radial nerve wends its way around the mid diaphysis of the humerus maybe with a fracture and because it's running through the axilla here, it's also prone to compression. Maybe if you have old style crutches that go up here, you know, you're hobbling around on crutches if you've got a lower limb injury, or because you've had your arm over something like the back of a chair for a long period of time and that nerve has become compressed. Wrist drop, a radial nerve palsy, the anatomy of, and how you test for it, and other considerations, break your plexus. Okay, see you next time. Thank you.